Alka's Cup is one of the world's most prestigious and historic races of all times. Where the best and most talented sailors are pitted against each other in extreme flying catamarans that reach speeds up to 50 knots. And now, Swedish Artemis Racing has just one goal. To seize history's oldest sporting trophy, the Old Mug. So we're about eight months to go until the America's Cup begins and um, it's a pretty crucial time for our campaign. Um, there's a lot of big decisions that need to, to be made right now. Things such as daggerboard designs, because it has a lead time to build them, to have them ready for the launch of the boat at the end of the year. And as a sailing team, we're now focusing a lot more of our time on the water, focusing a lot of time on racing, on maneuvers, and uh, I guess the R&D side from the sailing team is kind of ended and we're now more into a race mode. In mid-October, Bermuda was hit by a Category 4 hurricane, with winds of up to 53 meters per second. However, the island paradise stood strong against the storm, and fortunately the damage left in Hurricane Nicole's wake was mainly cosmetic. And just two days later, Artemis Racing was back out sailing on the Great Sound. We've just been conducting the last two weeks uh, race training with SoftBank Team Japan and Oracle Team USA, racing out on the waters and practicing our techniques and checking in on the performance. Unfortunately, it's been a bit of a windy two weeks, uh, but the racing we have had has been fantastic, fast and furious. So uh, if this was a Round, first round Roman, it would certainly be an exciting one for the fans. The competition schedule for next summer's America's Cup has finally been announced. And Artemis Racing will begin the round robin with races against both SoftBank Team Japan and Land Rover Bar on the 26th of May. One of the things that's quite interesting is uh, one of the teams is going to be going home after eight days of competition. It's a double round robin, it's going to happen very fast with very few rest days and um, we need to be prepared for that as a sailing team and as a wider team to make sure the boat's reliable because you can't miss a single day because you'll be out of the competition. So, um, you know, it's pretty exciting to see the schedules out and we're really looking forward to, uh, you know, getting our best foot forward on day one. Today we had the chance to have a bunch of young people, young sailors, from one of the biggest clubs in the south of France here in Yer, which is the club, the Yacht Club, organizing all the pre-Olympics uh, races since many, many years. And that's the symbolic which was important to share with these young guys, because Bart, Jan Percy, Nathan Odrich, all of our sailors fight there, you know, they did a lot of pre-Olympic races and that was so nice for them to receive quite a lot of uh, advice from Jan Percy and Christian and, and as usual each time you have the chance to share your, a bit of your white, white airs with younger guys, that's, um, that's a bonheur, comme on dit en français. It was amazing, like we saw all the staff and all the sailors from Artemis, we jumped on the boat with someone who explained us like all the dreams and our works boat. And then we took like a motorboat, we bring us on the huge sailing boat, like an amazing boat, where we could see every race is really close from the top wind mark. Never thought one in, one in my life I could see that kind of boat as close as what we saw today. I think getting children involved in sailing is a great way to learn responsibility. And the Andrew Simpson Sailing Foundation 
Uh, is, it's a program that's touching children, you know, our youth all over the world. Uh, I'm a product of youth sailing. I started sailing when I was nine or ten years old. And it's a great way to learn how to look after yourself and, and be competitive. And it's just, it's a neat thing and it's been a lot of fun seeing a lot of smiles on a lot of faces. They, it's good motivation to become a sailor because you see amazing sailors who start young, like me and other sa little sailors. And I think if I work harder, I can be a sailor like that one day. Thank you, Arago. Thank you, Artemis Racing. Thank you a lot, really. It was an amazing day. Perfect. Thank you. This is the cockpit I'm going to show you of Turbo One, a uh, highly sophisticated uh, machine. Uh, this is our first boat uh, of this campaign, so let's have a look at it. We got some controls here, uh, the, mainly the board rate control, uh, which uh, controls the lift on the board, uh, and that gives us um, uh, the, the height of the water. So it's not anymore about going left and right, it is also about going up and down. And you control that with uh, some buttons on the, on the helm. It's uh, very really easily comparable to a Formula One car. A lot of our, the technology that we use um, uh, comes from Formula One, high level autosport. And we're after the, the same things. We're trying to make that interface between the driver, helmsman, and the, the, the onboard system as um, optimized and to his requirements. Then we have also some other buttons which are uh, less important. You use them not as much as the one on the wheels, but still gives you some settings. Settings of the rudders, of the foil, and some of the wing as well. You can film everywhere. It's uh, there are some some stuff is secret, top secret. There's a lot of secrecy. You know, again, comparable to Formula One. You'll see on the pit lane in Formula One, they try to protect any area that they think they're making a gain in. We're the same. We try and protect every area we can. It's, it's hard to remember all the buttons, especially at the beginning when when you do a configuration change and uh, you step on the boat for the first couple of days, a lot of times I'm pressing the wrong buttons. And, uh, and this is something uh, that cannot happen in a race. Yeah, so basically when any button press is received from the onboard controller, it then goes through various algorithms, calculations, processes, before it is then moved on to the um, hydraulic system. The hydraulic system then operates a mechanical system that then uh, uh, ends up with a, uh, a, a movement of the appendage or, or the wing. You can easily make the mistake of flying too high and skidding sideways and uh, not having enough vertical fall in the water uh, or vice versa, falling quite low and not being fast enough. So it's, uh, it's really a three-dimensional three, three feeling. Some would think it's become too technical. Um, being a technical person, an engineer myself, no, I don't, because that's what we strive to do. You know, we love the task, the trying to always make gains. So, no, I don't think it's got too technical. So it's a weird feeling to have uh, such a powerful machine in your hands, um, especially when it's windy, you go fast, and. Uh, uh, but you, the most important thing is to get familiar with it. When you sail a day in uh, 18 knots or 20 knots, and the next day you sail in 15, it's like uh, easy. So we have, to, we have to get familiar with our tool, and uh, it's very important. 